this next video, we're covering the topic of keyframing, as well as an important topic in Pixera called dominant values. Let's take a look. All right, so jumping back into the project here, let's take a look at how we make a keyframe. So if you don't know what a keyframe is, a keyframe is simply some value for a parameter at some time. And that's a really important piece of this is that it has both a time and a value associated with it. One way we can make keyframes is simply by double clicking in the parameter we wanna make a keyframe for. And I can just double click into that clip and we can see I've made a keyframe here. So that keyframe has information in the inspector and we can see it's got a time that I can change or it has a value that I can change. So again, keyframes are values and times. You must have both of them. So I can double click into a parameter at my heart's content and make a bunch of keyframes if I want. And we'll end up with some zigzagging opacity effect going up and down. I can select each of these and delete them using the delete key. So what if I want to be a little more specific about the way that I'm adding a keyframe as opposed to just double clicking? Well, that's where this concept of dominant values come into play. If I want, for example, to have a fade in at the beginning of my clip here, in order to do that, I would need to have a keyframe with a value of zero here. And at some time after that, have a keyframe with a value of one. So let's go to my time zero. And I can use my opacity parameter here and I can start changing that. And we notice immediately that this yellow, this diamond that was gray becomes yellow. This is indicating something that we call a dominant value. A dominant value is essentially a value that the parameter is holding that does not yet have a time associated with it. If you're familiar with lighting, then a concept like latest takes precedent or highest takes precedent is something that would be similar. If not, you can go look something like that up and we'll include a link in this description to some good explanations of that concept. So we can see that if I change this value here, even though I have a keyframe at 100 or at one, if I play the timeline, I'm not seeing anything here because this dominant value is overriding any value in the keyframe. It has no time associated with it. If I go back to zero, I can then click on this diamond and hovering over it, I get a tooltip that says I can store it by clicking or you can store it by hitting the S hotkey. And now we can see I've added that keyframe right down here. I could then move forward to one second. And I could bring this all the way up to one. And again, if I click on this diamond or hit the S key, I will store a new value there. So now going back to the beginning of my timeline, if I play this, I'll have a one second fade in and then it'll hold for the rest of the clip. Similarly, I could jump to the end of the clip, say 11 seconds or so. I could just click here to drop a keyframe of whatever value is currently showing in that parameter. And then I could go to the end of the clip and bring this down to zero and add another keyframe. And so now we have a fade in and a fade out. Luckily, there is a quick way to add an in and an out fade. I can just click on my clip and press I and O, and that will add an in and an out fade automatically. I can change the timings of these fades by going to the settings, going to initial values, clicking on timelines, and we can see we have a clip fade time in frames here. 
So let's say that we want to have some sort of pan effect where a clip will start off of the screen and then pan on and then pan off again, or maybe it'll just pan all the way across. Well, in order to do that, I'll need to utilize dominant values and position keyframes in order to create the keyframes with the clip over here and then with the clip somewhere over here. So accessing those position values can be done either in the clip inspector or I can double click in my layer and we can twirl down our position. And here we have X, Y, and Z parameters where I can create keyframes for this clip. So if I want to do this, I can use my position parameters here and I can double click just like I showed you in opacity to get those keyframes in there, although that's not super specific. So I can group select those and use the delete key to get rid of them. I can also click into my position values here and I can drag this off screen a little bit. Remember, this yellow diamond here or here is indicating a dominant value. So I can scrub back to the beginning of my clip. And I can hit the S key to store that value. And then I'll go to the end of my clip. And I'll move my position all the way across here. Maybe we move it so that way we can see it, but I'll move it all the way so that it's at 1940. And I'll store this value and you can see there's a small slope here between these two keyframes. So if we play this clip, it'll fade in, pan across. And then we'll fade out at the end of the clip. One thing to note about dominant values here is let's say that I've decided halfway in this clip, I actually want this to be at zero. If I haven't stored the keyframe, the dominant value will override it. So we can see I'm no longer seeing that tracking shot because I've got a dominant value overriding the opacity. The way to change this is to store this value using a keyframe. So pick a time, hit the S key, and we can see I've now created some keyframe positions here. So now we'll have a fade in, a fade out, and then a fade back in before fading out at the end of the clip. Here's a good example of dominant values in action. On the left, we have a project with a, dom a set of keyframes and no dominant values in the opacity. And you can see that the fading in and fading out is happening as normal. On the right side, we have the same project with the same keyframes, but a dominant value is holding the opacity of the clip at about 75%. So it is overriding those keyframes. Remember, keyframes are values plus time, whereas dominant values are just the values with no time associated with it. Let's look at some of the other features that we can utilize with keyframes. If I select a keyframe, I can change its joint kind in the inspector or with this little icon in our timeline toolbar here or by pressing the J key, I can change the joint kind of my keyframe. And if I grab one of these Beziers, I can uh, change the effect on our, uh, the way that our opacity fade is working in order to get a little more uh, gradual of a fade in, something that is easier on uh, perhaps the viewer or is more desirable for the effect you're going for. You could also use this on something like a movement keyframe where you could change this bezier to come really tight here 
and now my movement if I hit play is going to speed up right at the end so that it zips out a little faster. Let's take a look at some of the shortcuts and tools in Pixera to help out with utilizing keyframes. If we've made a bunch of keyframes in our opacity track here, I can select a keyframe and I have this box here that will allow me to select all the keyframes of that parameter or I can select all the keyframes. If I select one keyframe, I can select all the keyframes following that one keyframe. Or I can select all the keyframes previous to that keyframe using these three buttons in here. I can use the Alt arrow key to snap to a specific keyframe. And one thing to note is if I snap to this keyframe and decide to change the value, I would want to notice this yellow diamond dominant value. I would want to hit S to restore that value there. I could right click on a clip and in here we have some options right here where I could remove keys. I can remove all of them or all outside of the clip duration. And I can also copy and paste the key structure of the clip as a whole if I wanted to move it between clips on different layers. If I move my now pointer and change a value, that yellow diamond has some additional options if we hover over and see the tooltip. It says that we can alt click to store and remove other keys or shift click to reset. So if I alt click, it will store this 90% opacity at time three seconds and six frames, and it'll remove all of these other keyframes. Let's see that. Alt click, and we now have that value of 90, and everything else has been removed. I can use the Control Z button. Let's get back to 0.9. There's also the Shift click which resets, which will basically let go of this dominant value. So I can shift click to let go of that. Another thing we can do here is I can hit escape, which will release all of my values. Keep in mind that escape will release any dominant values you have. So if I make a bunch of changes here to maybe size, and let's move this just so we can see it a little better. So I have a bunch of dominant values. I can shift click on each of these individually, or I can hit escape, which will release all of them at the same time. When we're working with keyframes, there's one other useful way that we can manipulate content that might be a little easier if you're trying to work on the fly that doesn't involve keyframing in our timeline or in our inspector. And it's a concept that we call in-screen editing. In-screen editing involves using the workspace to manipulate content and still using the S key or clicking on these diamonds to store keyframes. In order to do that, we're going to look at our selection mode up here in the top right corner of our workspace. And I'm going to make sure that I am in my layers in compositing selection mode. From here, I can click on my content and we can see that I have this yellow diamond as I try and click and drag it around. This allows me to manipulate the content like I would any object in the screens or mapping tab. I can grab these handles and resize it and we can see I'm getting yellow diamonds down here in the layer header indicating some dominant values. However, these dominant values now have outlines of yellow lines instead of filled in yellow diamonds. And if we hover over, we can see the tooltip there that says domination originating from main editing window. Store by clicking here or on diamond in main window. This is just indicating to us that if I shift click on this value, 
I won't reset just the X position. I'll reset all of the position values and all of the size values as all of those parameters were determined relative to each other. So again, I can click around, I can resize this, bring it back into my workspace, and I can very easily create some movement by saving this keyframe here. If I hit the S key, I see all those keyframes stored. So I can now move forward in time a bit, and I could move this down to here. And now I've got a nice movement from one point to another without having to manipulate the position values. All right, so let's take a look at how we can utilize several of the concepts we've talked about to create a complex piece of keyframe programming uh, quickly and easily, like this one. So I'm going to stop this timeline here, which is going to unload the content. And we'll go to this other timeline where I've just dropped a clip onto here. And if I hit play, we'll see that this content is the normal size and is not moving at all. So we can double click here and let's go look at our position and size keyframes or parameters. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shift arrow key hotkey to get back to the beginning of the clip, or I can drag my now pointer to zero, or I could hit enter zero zero to go to zero. And we want to resize this. So I'm going to go to my size parameters and I'm going to use these link buttons in order to link these two parameters. And then I can click in here and I'm going to say divide divide by four and make this piece of content one fourth the size that it was previously. I'll go ahead and hit S to save that keyframe. Then I'm going to grab my content, making sure that I am in my layers and compositing selection mode. And I'm going to use my snapping tool that we learned about earlier, and I'm going to press the shift key to snap to my uh, left edge here. And then I'll press shift again to snap to my uh, top edge. And we can see I've got my in-screen editing dominant values down here. I'll go ahead and hit the S key to save those. And then I'm just going to move forward two seconds by going to 200. And I'm going to move this forward over to here using my snapping tools. And once again, I'm going to hit S. And I'll go forward to 400 seconds. Bring this down to here. Hit S again. 600 seconds. and 800 seconds. And now if I go back to zero, I should have that same piece of content here. And if I play this other timeline, we'll see how I did. And they're offset a little bit, obviously, but uh, looks pretty good to me.